안녕하세요. 포지 수리와 연구소 박호걸 소장입니다. 어, 스페셜 스팀 세미나 참여하신 여러분께 감사의 말씀을 드립니다. 이 세미나는 작년 12월에 여러분께 첫 선을 보인 이래 어느덧 어, 다섯 번째 행사가 되었습니다. 코로나 바이러스로 여전히 모두가 힘든 가운데 있습니다만 이런 어려운 상황 속에서도 스팀 교육과 관련된 여러 연구와 개발을 지속적으로 이루어지고 있다는 점이 인상적입니다. 오늘은 그 성과들을 소개해드리는 자리가 될 텐데요. 이제 오늘의 사회 중한 분이신 익스프렌시 워크샵의 딜렉서이신 크리스토프 박사님을 소개해드립니다. Hello everyone, I'm Hogol Park, Director of the 4D Mathematical Science and Creativity Research Institute. Uh, I would like to thank everybody participating today's special STEAM seminar. This event actually started five months ago uh, on last December. And today's event is already the fifth edition of this seminar series. Uh, although everyone around the world is still suffered by the COVID-19 pandemic right now, I was pretty impressed that the research and development regarding STEAM education is still ongoing. Today, we are going to see the recent achievements regarding this topic. Now, let me introduce Dr. Christoph Enivesi, STEAM Director of the, the Experience Workshop, who is also one of the moderators of today's event. Christoph, I'll give you the mic. Good morning, everybody. Thanks. Thanks a lot uh, for everyone for joining in. We know that uh, you are located in various time zones around the earth and uh, some of you face uh, with uh, deep immense challenges uh, to be here with us. So deepest respect uh, for those who are uh, spending the middle of the night uh, here uh, to uh, joining us. And uh, let me introduce uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Christopher Brownell, who is also a late night owl, I think, uh, in, in, Cali in California, right? So uh, please introduce our speakers and uh, have some words about our programs. Before you would uh, start, I'm happy to tell you that uh, we received uh, more than 150 registrations uh, from all locations around the globe. I guess uh, many people are just uh, joining in. So we are encouraging you to uh, tell your location in the chat. So let's see uh, how many uh, places, uh, how many locations are involved uh, today. And also to use uh, the chat to have comments, questions on any points uh, when, when, when you got some ideas. So the reason uh, for these meetings is really to get into conversation, to uh, meet each other, and also to find uh, new uh, partnerships, new ideas, new, new collaborations. So you are warmly welcome also to share your links uh, about your activities um, and uh, make new friends. This is, this is why we are here uh, uh, mostly. And uh, we have this seminar actually every month. So, uh, when you signed up uh, to this event, you might get uh, information uh, from for upcoming events, and you are warmly welcome to share this information with all your connections, with all your friends uh, in, in your network. The goal is to be as much as possible and also to record these talks and share uh, these, these talks uh, because um, we think uh, that uh, there are several pioneers already in the STEAM field and uh, we would like to introduce uh, in this, in this, series, in this uh, series of spe special STEAM seminars all uh, these, these highlights and um, this is an open uh, network so we're really looking forward to your achievements, to your success stories. So please uh, let us know uh, what you are doing. And now the floor is for Chris uh, Brownell from the, for, from the Pre Presno University. Thank you. Thank you, Christoph. And uh, thank you, Mr. Park, for putting on this, this uh, monthly seminar. This is um, always a, a joy to, to take part in. Um, I'm... I send you all warm greetings from, from California. It's really starting to warm up here. And I, I hope uh, the same is true for the rest of you who may have been suffering through a cold winter, um, that, that you are starting to feel the effects of a spring. 
um, in many, many ways, I, I, including um, gaining some ground against this, uh, this pandemic. I hope we are all working strongly towards, towards that end. It's my pleasure uh, to introduce the first speaker tonight, um, uh, or yeah, tonight for some of us. Um, Julio Wolfinger is, um, uh, she holds a, a bachelor's and a master's degree in education in mathematics, uh, philosophy and psychology um, from Johannes Kepler University in Linz, Austria, uh, where she presently works with the GeoGebra uh, organization as uh, the leader of the GeoGebra community team and the GeoGebra origin lab. Um, she may have a visit from her pet cat, so don't be surprised if you see a, a, a nice um, warm black cat walk across the screen while she's speaking, but she, she's pretty sure that she's uh, kept him well fed for now, so don't think we'll have any too many issues from that. But um, she's been working with GeoGebra for uh, a little over three years now and uh, would like to talk to us all uh, a bit about um, to GeoGebra, the present, and what may be coming in the future. Julia, please take over. Thank you for this nice introduction. Um, hello to everybody. I'm really happy to be here today and to tell you about what we were working in the last month and to show you what's new at GeoGebra and also what's coming in the future. I heard a presentation, but I'm also will, I also will do uh, lots of live demos today and in some live demos you also can join so that you can also try out new tools during my talk. Yeah, before I start with the topics, I would like uh, to tell you a bit what I'm doing at GeoGebra. So I'm leading there the GeoGebra community team and we take care, for example, of community support. So if you have any problems, any questions, my team takes care of all the emails so that we make sure that you can get an answer and that we help you uh, with your requests. Uh, we also take care of events. We are doing work so workshops, teacher trainings, we take care of social media to make sure that everyone knows when we have new features so that we inform our community. Um, yeah, we are working together with the worldwide community. So if there are some projects we work together like we did with resources, I will show you um, such a project later. Um, yeah, we also create resources, we highlight resources, and we are also responsible for tutorials. So if there is a new feature, uh, we write a tutorial so that everyone knows how to use it. And we also have a look at the quality of the apps and the website. So if there is a new release before we are testing the apps and the website to make sure that everything is fine and nothing is broken. Yeah, so that is uh, are the main tasks that I and my team are doing at GeoGebra. Um, yeah, today I want to show you some different parts and I would like to start with the website and show you what's new on the GeoGebra website. I will start with a nice project that we have started uh, last summer. Uh, may you already heard about GeoGebra Classroom. I also will introduce that in some minutes. Um, after we have uh, created GeoGebra Classroom, we also wanted to have really good resources on our website and especially resources that also fit to the curriculum. So we had a look at the illustrative mathematics curriculum and we created a completely digital version of it. So the IM curriculum is a highly acclaimed content and practice standard focused curriculum where students learn to understand, um, to make connections between concepts and procedures. And we took this curriculum and made a GeoGebra version out of it. So it's now completely digital. 
on our website. What does that mean? That means that we created hundreds of interactive activities, uh, which can be used in any learning settings. So you can use that uh, for face-to-face -face learning. You can also use it for distance learning or for hybrid uh, learning settings, especially in combination with GeoGebra Classroom. Um, it doesn't matter if the students are at home, teachers are able to monitor all the students' work in real time. So they see what the students are doing. So we will make a demo in a minute, but before I will show you how these resources look like and where you can find these resources. So as you can see here in my presentation, I have here the link. So you can find them uh, in, on this link. So jujibra.org slash im. So on this page, you will find uh, the illustrative mathematics curriculum. We did that for high school, uh, for middle school last summer. And as people uh, like that, uh, we got lots of requests for doing the same for the high school curriculum. So uh, we are now working on the high school curriculum and yeah. We already made a good progress, so it's almost finished. So you can also find here resources for the high school. Um, yeah, how to use this curriculum. As I mentioned before, you can use it with Classroom. Uh, if you're working with Google Classroom, so you can also use it with Google Classroom. So on this page, you also find uh, two demos uh, where you get information how to use it. Yeah, let's assume we are teaching in the middle school. Let's have a look at the middle school curriculum. So if I click on the middle school curriculum, I can now choose a grade level. Let's have a look at grade six. And then I have here all the units. Let's have a look in unit one. And now here I'm in unit one. Uh, there I have the different topics. So I have here linked the teacher ma materials. So that's leading to the IM page for the teachers so that I can find all the information that I need for preparing this lesson. And now here comes the GeoGebra version in the student resource. So we also have a student material. And here you can see we have a GeoGebra book. So uh, every uh, lesson has two components, a lesson component and a practice component. So you can find here DIM resources in a digital form. So we, you can see here we have interactive question elements. We create the different applets so that uh, the students can explore uh, something. Uh, so they can directly work here in this interactive uh, activity. They also get some information how to use different GeoGebra tools. And they do not have to open an extra app or to do something on paper, it's all digitally. For example, here they could also use drawing tools to show their reasoning when they're calculating the area. So we have done that for all the uh, middle school, uh, illustrative mathematics middle school resources. Yeah, now as a teacher, I could use that in classroom. Uh, when I click on create class, but we will now have a closer look at GeoGebra Classroom. So all these resources are free to use uh, on our website. So if they are useful for you and your students, feel free to use them in your class. Yeah, then I mentioned before GeoGebra Classroom. GeoGebra Classroom is our new tool for live conversations uh, where you can also use interactive tools. So we created GeoGebra Classroom last year. It was released last June. And since that, we are also improving it all the time. Yeah, what is GeoGebra Classroom and what can you do with it? You can assign with GeoGebra Classroom interactive and engaging tasks for your students. So you give the students a link or a code, then the students can join your class. The students do not have to log in. So there are two possibilities. Either they log in uh, or they just use a guest account. We will also have a look at these options. Um, yeah, and then as a teacher, you can view uh, the whole progress of the students in real time. So you see on which tasks are they working, how many tasks they already have started, and you get a good overview, even if you are not in the same room. Yeah, 
And I would uh, suggest that we try that out together. I prepared an activity for that. So um, what do you need to use GeoGebra Classroom? As a teacher, you need a GeoGebra account and you need an activity and GeoGebra activity that you want to give to your students. So I have prepared here a, a nice activity, as you can see here with some cats, like because they are my favorite pets. Um, yeah. And I will show you here uh, which elements this activity needs to be needs to include uh, that you can use classroom. So for classroom, it's important that you have at least one interactive element in your activity. So that could be a multiple choice question. That could be a GeoGebra applet, an open question, or for example, now it's also possible to add GeoGebra nodes to activities. GeoGebra nodes is our whiteboard software. So you can see here, you can write with a pen, you can add different features. You could also add different media. So it's in, uh, possible to add tables, to add a graphing calculator or the CAS calculator. You can add web elements, images, and so on. So you have lots of different possibilities with uh, GeoGebra nodes. So that's also something where we could have an extra talk about it to show all the possibilities. Uh, but I will also uh, share the link for the tutorial with you. So if you're interested in it, you can also have a look at the tutorial. Um, and GeoGebra nodes can also be included now in activities. So you can build your own activity with different interactive elements. And if there is at least such an interactive element, you will get here a create class button. So if I click on create class, I can now give my class a name and I can click on create. And you can now see here my virtual classroom. So I invite you now all to join my class as a student. So you will see the student role, uh, but you will also see how it looks like for the teacher on my screen. For inviting students, you have two possibility. You either can copy this link and send the link in the chat, like I will do now. So you can find, oh, it's the wrong chat, sorry. You can find now in the chat a link and I invite you all to join the class as my students. So you can either uh, join by link or so maybe by link joining is easy if you are teaching with another video tool like we do now with Zoom or with Teams. If you are in class and teaching face to face, you maybe are not connected with uh, any chat with your students. So you could also use a code. So you can write this code, for example, on the blackboard and the students can also use the code to enter. I will show you here in the, on the right side how it's also possible to join with the code. So when you are on the website, you can click in the menu on classroom or you go directly to jujibra.org slash classroom. And you can see now here, you can enter here the code and the students then will also come to the class. So as a student, I can enter the code and join the class. And as you can see here, there are two different sign in options. You either sign in with your GeoGebra profile or you enter as a guest. The benefit of signing in with the GeoGebra profile is that your work will also be saved for you as a student. So you could come back later and uh, continue working later, or maybe uh, before an exam, you can have a look at your work. If you are not logged in, it's not saved for you as a student. So as soon as you leave the browser, uh, you can't come back to your work. For this teacher, it doesn't matter. In both cases, all the work of the students is saved. It's just for the student to decide, do I want to come back to the work later? Then I should sign in. 
uh, if it doesn't matter if it's just a, a pool in the class and I don't don't have to come back to the work, it's also okay to just uh, sign in with a name. So you can now enter your name or sign in. And when you then start the class, as a student, you will see here all the tasks. And uh, you, what's also nice, if I'm doing something here, I see here in the right upper corner that everything is saved automatically. So the students do not have to save something manually. As soon as they do something, it's saved. So uh, it's not possible that uh, some work gets lost. Thanks, Chris, for sharing the link again in the chat. So I invite you all uh, to continue with our class. So if you're not joined already, please just click on the link. And if you're joined, uh, you should be already here in my virtual class. So you can see here now that I have the information how many students are in my class. I can see who is in the class. So I have a card for every student and I can also see on which tasks the students are already working. So I get them preview. And if someone is changing, changing something or is working on another task, I will get here a live update. So I can here really monitor uh, the work of the students. Uh, and see what they are doing, what on which tasks they are working. And as you can see here, if another student join, uh, you will here get a new card. So this page gives you a good overview of all your students and what they are working on. Then I also have the possibility to click on a student. For example, when I click on this card, I will see all uh, the results of the students. So I can see the work uh, in more uh, de more detail so I can see all the work. Then I also have the possibility to get an overview of every single task. So when I click here on the title, I can see that I have now here four tasks. I have four, I have four tasks because I had four interactive elements in my activity. So every interactive element that could be a question element, multiple choice or open question, a GeoGebra app, a GeoGebra applet, a notes applet, all of these uh, apps or elements get automatically uh, a task element. So, for example, I can see here on task uh, one, 17 out of 19 people already worked on that. So when I click here on task one, task one was a multiple choice question. I get here a nice chart with all the answers of the students. This also updates in real life, in real time. So you can see here, if I'm changing my answers as a student, I can see here in real time uh, the changes in this in this bar chart. I have also the possibility to see who choose which answer. So I get the list with all the names of the people who choose answer A. Um, yeah, I also have the possibility to pause the class. So as soon as I click pause the class, you can see here in the students view, the class is paused. So the students can't continue working. So they have either listened to the teacher uh, or maybe here in this case, it would be useful before I show the right answer to pause the class, just to avoid that every student is jumping to the uh, right answer in the last second. Then I can show, uh, show the right answer, for example, and discuss with the student, students the results. As soon as I click resume the class, you all can continue working. So that's the case, how it looks like for multiple choice questions. Task two was a GeoGebra applet. So you can see here, I have an overview of all the work of the students and I get also in real time updates what they are doing. Of course, I also can click here on a picture to have a detailed view. So I could also have a look at the construction. At the moment, it is so that when I'm changing here something as a teacher, it's not changed for the students. So the idea was when, for example, they are creating a triangle and an in, in, with an in circle, I can drag on the triangle and can see if the correct construction is right. So if everything is moving, uh, and yeah, now we're thinking about maybe it would also be useful if the students would see the changes so that I can help the 
students, uh, especially in uh, distance learning. So maybe that's something that will be changed in the future. But at the moment, it's so that it's just a preview for the teacher so that you can change their something or explore the construction without changing the original construction of the student. Another nice feature is to hide the name. So you have on every side, you have the possibility to hide the names. So if you want to do some discussions about some uh, different ways of solutions or some different answers, you could also hide the names before showing that to your students so that uh, students don't feel bad if they maybe had a wrong, wrong answer. So students do not know uh, who gave these answers. And it's also safe. So when I click hide names on one task, it's also saved for the next tasks. So task three was an open question. So you can see here all the answers. Also these answers are updating in real time if you're changing them. If the answer would be longer, you could also click on it and you will see the whole answer. And task four was the notes applet. So you can uh, see here all the drawings. Also, these are updating in real time. So you can also have a look what the students are doing here. And of course, it's also possible to click on it to see it bigger. Yeah, so you can monitor all the work of your students. You get in real time updates what they are doing, on which tasks they are working, uh, and uh, how the answers look like. Another feature is that you could also you, uh, add a co-teacher. So if you may be teaching together with a colleague, you could also click on the share button and then you can add here the email address or the GeoGebra name of the co-teacher. And then the co-teacher sees the same like I see here and also has the possibility to show and hide the names or to pause the class. Yes, I think that were uh, the most important uh, information about GeoGebra Classroom. Yeah. Yeah, and as I mentioned before, we are working on Classroom, so we are always improving it, and we are looking uh, for features which are maybe missing or which should be added. And one of the next features will be that we create a multi-user version. So uh, the idea is that the students are working together on a notes file, like you see here. And if student one is drawing something, also the other students will see it. So we will enable group work so the teacher can choose which, sorry, which student is in which group. Uh, we could have individual work, per, uh, works uh, in group pair work and also works uh, group work uh, in a group size of three or four. So the teacher can choose the group size and also uh, in which groups the students will be. And then the teacher would also have the possibility to go through the groups and to see what the groups are doing. And the group members will see in real time what others are doing so they can work together on a task uh, or do some brainstorming together. And because of this, we will also add a chat so you can see here uh, a short preview uh, that the students in a group can also chat with each other, especially when they are physically separated. That's also important that they can talk to each other um, or uh, coordinate their work. And also the teacher will be able to send a message to all the students. So uh, that's something that we're, our team is currently working on. And yeah, we are looking forward when we can uh, give that out to the public. Uh, another thing we are working on is a formula editor for the open answer, open ended questions. So if we have an open question at the moment, it's not possible for the students to enter math expressions in a nice way because there's no formula editor. So we also will add here a formula editor so that it's also uh, possible to add math expressions in a nice way for the open-ended answers. Yeah, so that was an outlook for classroom. Then I would like to show you a bit of the community work, uh, what we have done during the last year, during the pandemic. So last, um, last spring, 
we created some resource collections. So as we had the situation that teachers were looking for really good resources and maybe also resources that give automatically feedback to students so that they can use it uh, in distance learning, we created some resource collections. So uh, there are so many great resources at the GeoGebra page, but sometimes it's hard or it takes some time to really find all the good stuff. So we created these resource collections we did that for the uh, elementary school, the middle school, and the high school. I'll show you how that looks like. Um, on our, we have that on our front page. So we have the featured resources, and there you can find this resource collection. So for example, for elementary school, you have here the different grade levels. And when you click on it, you will find a GeoGebra book with create uh, resources which also have some auto checking mechanism most of them so uh, these are great resources to use uh, especially also in distance learning and of course you can also use all these resources and directly create a class out of it so if i now click here create class i can decide do i want only have this activity or do I want to have the whole book? So that's also possible. You can create a class from everything you find on the GeoGebra website. Um, yeah, and uh, we did uh, this resource collection for, for the German resources and also for the English resources. And for example, the Latin American uh, community, GeoGebra community did the same for the Spanish resources. So they also created uh, collections, so they are also available in Spanish. Another nice thing are the remote learning templates. So my colleague Tim uh, collected lots of different learning tablets here, um, which also can be used in classroom. For example, the Scarfield applet here is quite nice that could be used as icebreaker questions, especially uh, in the uh, situation of distance learning to just get an overview how the students are feeling at home. Are they positive and energetic? Or maybe they are today a bit tired. Uh, so that could also be used in classroom. And then you would see uh, an overview of all the student answers. Yeah, there you can explore much more like a stress level check. So you could ask the students uh, how they are feeling, how stressed they are uh, in the last days, today, and to get the feeling how they are feeling yeah, there is much more also some other nice templates like a clock or some coins, so you can also use them to create interactive lessons. And of course, there we also have a video where you get instruction how to use that uh, templates in your activities. And you will also find all the links in the presentation, which I will also share with you in the chat. Um, at the end. Yeah, then I would like to give you an insight what we are we're doing on the app side. So we released in the last time a new app. It's called the GeoGebra Calculator Suite. So the GeoGebra Calculator Suite combines uh, all our mobile apps. So it combines uh, the graphing calculator, the geometry calculator, the 3D calculator, and the CAS calculator. So the idea is that the Suite Calculator will be the successor of the good old classic app. With the classic app, we have the problem that it's not uh, possible to use it on mobile phones and mobile phones play an important role. So we uh, decided to create the app that could also be used on mobile phones and that also could be used in exam mode on mobile devices. So the Suite app can be used on mobile phones, uh, on tablets, for iOS, for Android, and also in the web version. And we will soon also have a desktop version for Mac OS and for Windows. So you can use it on all platforms and you can use it in all platforms in exam mode. 
and you could also switch between the perspectives, for example, between geometry and CAS during an exam. So that's important. We had all these single apps, but we always had the problem in exams. Students couldn't switch if they need a geometry and they need CAS, they couldn't switch between the exam, between two, these two uh, apps. And therefore we created the Sweet Calculator app. There it's easy to switch between the apps. Before I show to you uh, the Sweet Calculator in a short demo, I would like to show you also this table. Um, we often uh, got the questions, uh, why do you have so many GeoGebra apps and which apps should I use? And that was the reason why we created this table as an overview that you can see uh, which app has which functionalities. So the reason why we have so many different apps is that we want to support as many regions as possible in exams. So uh, the rules which technology can be used in exams is quite different uh, in the different countries. And sometimes even if in one country in the different region, it's not the same. So um, for example, we in Austria, we are quite open. So students are allowed to uh, make the final exam with the classic app. So they can also use CAS and 3D. In other countries, maybe only the graphing calculator would be allowed. And that is the reason why we have uh, so many different apps so that everyone can choose their app for the region and to have a look uh, which features does the app have and which features are allowed so that we have for all the regions, hopefully a good solution. So on this table, you will find an overview which uh, features are included in the apps. And now I would like to show you the Speed Calculator app on my mobile phone. So I will switch to the mobile phone. So now you should see my mobile phone with the Sweet Calculator app. So how does it look like? When you open the app, it looks like the graphing calculator. Uh, that's the reason uh, uh, because it's starting in the graphic perspective. So you have here, for example, in the graphing calculator, you will start in the algebra view. You could enter here a function. You could also create sliders. For example, when I create this linear function, I will get sliders for A and B. So that's the graphic perspective. You also have here uh, some selected tools. And you also have the table view. So if I have a function, I could also have a look at the table if I click on the table of values, I get also a table. So that's the graphing perspective. Now in this app, I can also switch to another perspective. So when I click on switch calculator, I can switch to the 3D calculator. And now here I have all the tool of the tools of the 3D calculator. So I can, for example, create a cube and create the net of a cube. And I also have the augmented reality uh, option here. So I could click on augmented reality and put the group, the cube directly on my desk. So you have all the power of the single apps also here combined in this uh, sweet calculator app. Then I can switch to the next app. And for example, let's have a look at geometry. I could use all the geometry tools. and work on a geometry task, or I'm going to uh, work on a CAS task. I could also solve equations, for example, in the CAS view. And I can click solve and I would have the results. So you have all the different uh, perspectives and you can choose the perspective which you need. And of course, when I'm going back, so for example, let's have a look at graphing, everything is saved what I was doing and graphing. So students can switch also in exams between uh, these perspectives, because here I could also activate the exam mode. So that was a short inside uh, in the GeoGebra Suite Calculator.
Yes, we're also working uh, or still working on the sweet calculator so that it's that it can really be the successor of uh, GeoGebra Classic. It needs a spreadsheet, so we will also add a spreadsheet view and we will also add the probability calculator. And as mentioned before, we will soon also add the offline version for macOS and Windows so that that also could be used in exams. Yeah, um, I have linked here for you all the tutorials. So uh, today I just give you a quick sneak peek in all these new functionalities. To have a closer look, uh, you can have a look at the tutorials. So I have a link for the classroom tutorial where you can find step-by-step uh, -step instructions how to use classroom. I have a tutorial for the suite uh, calculator. There you can find uh, different examples how to use the suite calculator and also the link to our tutorial page where you can find a tutorial for every app we have. For example, if you're interested in the notes app and what you can do with the notes app, you will find here also a tutorial for the uh, notes app. Yes, and if you would like to stay up to date what we are doing, and for example, if you want to get information when we uh, finally release uh, the uh, multi-user version, then I also uh, invite you to just sign up to our newsletter, then you will uh, get information if there's something new about GeoGebra. Yes, that was everything from my side, and um, I invite you all to just ask questions now here, but also in the future, if you have some questions, if there are some wishes or you have ideas for further features, uh, you're always welcome to contact us at support at geogebra.org and we are happy to answer your questions there. And also I'm happy to answer your questions now. Thank you very much, Julia, for that very, very interesting and informative talk. Um, there are a few questions I've I've been fielding or trying uh, holding off. Um, mm -hmm. One was about language uh, specifically. Uh, are some are th are the pages that are published translatable into various languages? Specifically, Korean was a question um, that was that came up. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so GeoGebra is translated in lots of languages, so I would have to have a look if Korean is translated, uh, but we also are looking forward if someone yeah, likes to join, so all our translators are volunteers, uh, we're always happy if someone says, okay, my language is not here, it, classroom is not translated in my language, I would like to help, so we're always happy if someone would like to join our translators team and help us translating. Okay. Um, and another question that came up uh, is about, uh, will anything happen to the classic version? Um, some people prefer, prefer the classic GeoGebra version over these um, newfangled ways, it seems. So the classic version will stay. So don't worry, it won't uh, disappear, so it will stay, but uh, we just added additionally the uh, sweet calculator, as I mentioned, for the mobile devices. There is important that also students can do exams with their mobile device. That uh, classic, of course, can be used on the computer also in the future. And it's still, it's available today. Yeah, it's still, so even classic five is available. So you can use classic five and classic six are both available. So I know some users really prefer them and are really classic fans. So you can use them. They are available on our download page on the website. Uh, great. Uh, there's, a, there's also a, a somewhat technical question about the exam mode. Um, will, and will students have to um, take screenshots forever of, of what's happened, what they've done and send those to their teachers? Uh, or, or will there be uh, other, other ways in which teachers can interact with student work? At the moment, uh, the exam mode is used for paper-based exams. So the idea is that you hand out a uh, paper for the exam as a teacher and that the students are using the app just as a calculator. So they are calculating, but the results are written on the paper. 
so that they do not have to hand in something what they were doing on the app. So they use the app to get to the results and then they write the results down uh, on the paper and then they give the paper to the teacher. So the exam mode is so that uh, you are locked to the app. So uh, students wouldn't be possible to take screenshots because everything is locked so that they can't cheat and they only can access the whole functionality of the phone when they leave the exam mode. Then there will also be uh, uh, short information for the teacher uh, where they get some details when was the exam started how long was the student in the in the exam so that the teacher also knows that the students uh, didn't leave the exam mode and did some cheating mm, that's, that's, <laughs> that's something that many people are very concerned about yes yeah <laughs> do do resources created in one one app or one version of uh, GeoGebra port easily into others? For instance, um, is it possible to create an interactive resource in Classic and have it ported into the full suite? Yes, that's works. So you can create something in Classic and then open it in Suite. Wonderful. And I think um, I, that's, well, there was another question. Can you have multiple co-teachers in a yes. classroom? Yes. That's also possible. <laughs> that, here, that was a last minute entry there. Um, <laughs> thank you, Yulia. I, I appreciate uh, your flexibility with everything that's happened this evening um, or morning or afternoon. Um, yes, thank you very much. Uh, I With that, uh, I think it's time that we I hand this back to Christoph to introduce our next uh, set of speakers. Thank you very much, uh, Julia, uh, for your flexibility and uh, the great uh, contribution. So uh, I would like to ask uh, the participants if uh, someone would like to turn on camera and microphone and uh, have a question or comment uh, to Julia now. Is it someone? If there is no anyone in the at the moment, so thank you again, uh, Julia. Uh, your talk uh, will be available in an edited uh, format uh, on on the YouTube. Thank you a lot uh, for your uh, participation and thank you for uh, contributing uh, to this uh, STEAM uh, seminar series. We. We are sure that there will be more uh, GeoGebra uh, included or GeoGebra connected uh, talks in the future as we had already many in the past. So it was a great contribution actually. We also got some interest that do we want to launch some GeoGebra courses? So uh, is a GeoGebra institution uh, launching online courses? Are you aware of where people can go if they are interested? to learn GeoGebra from the basics? We want to improve that so that we have maybe a list of events where you can participate. At the moment, we do not really have, or oh, it's more regional that people are asking if we would like to do something. But unfortunately, we do not really have a list where you can have a look where's the next event, where could I join, but maybe that's something we can improve in the future. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, it's our great pleasure to uh, welcome our next uh, speakers uh, on stage who are also have a lot uh, to do uh, with uh, GeoGebra. Uh, they really uh, extensively using uh, GeoGebra both in their research and uh, education activities. So the next speakers are uh, Sara Herskovitz. Uh, she's the head of the mathematics department at the Levinsky Academic College uh, in Tel Aviv, Israel. And uh, she uh, was the uh, head of math mathematics department in the Center of uh, Educational Technology in Israel for almost uh, 30 years. Uh, he, she published uh, a lot of books and research papers in the field of uh, problem solving, mathematics education and STEAM education. And uh, one of her main uh, fields is also assessment and evaluation. Uh, the joint speaker 
uh, is uh, Professor uh, Thierry or Noah Dana Picar, who is a president emeritus of the Jerusalem College of uh, Technology and uh, director of a research chair. She's a former chair of the Department of Mathematics at uh, JCT. He also a very uh, extensive author. Uh, he has uh, uh, several research papers, book chapters, and digital textbook uh, based on the usage of uh, computer algebra uh, system. And uh, he's also devoted to mathematics education and STEAM education with a special focus on higher education. And he's also keen uh, to host uh, conferences where uh, GeoGebra is uh, highlighted. So uh, one of the next uh, event uh, will be also uh, connected uh, to his organization. I'm sure that uh, he will uh, tell all of this uh, in his talk. So welcome and the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to all the organizers with the, we have to face a lot of very, very strange problems and situations. Okay, let's uh, share the screen. Okay, the work that I uh, will present is a joint work, as uh, Christoph said, is a joint work with Sarah Eshkovitz, a long range work that uh, we are doing. We did it in the, in the former world when the, everything was okay. You know, it's already prehistory in the pre-pandemic pre world. But suddenly this pandemic appeared and uh, we, we are on the spot in a very, very different uh, situation. So uh, in this new world where everything is totally upside down and uh, a lot of things have been locked down. Uh, we had to consider how we did, how we were, how we taught and how, how we learned and uh, how we can do it in the new, in the new world. And so if you, if you remember once upon a time, the teacher was showing things to, to the students Maybe the students were looking at this as a teacher, but not at the book that he was showing them. But uh, at least there was a personal interaction and uh, both the teachers and the students were in the same classroom. So es war einmal. And uh, things even for the researchers were quite different. The researchers had a, a big personal library and the institutional library and we were working. You, you remember that? Yeah, you, you maybe you cannot see that on this picture, but actually the pen which is in use just there. Oh, I, I wanted to show it to you. It's a GeoGebra pen. But even when you when you are using and we were using new technologies, we are also using the traditional technologies. And this pen is a pen whose uh, where the logo of GeoGebra is on on it, but on the other side. And suddenly uh, things became uh, different. And so we had still books and printed matters and we could still write something and we could use uh, various uh, plastic tools and toys and uh, build a lot of things. Uh, the, the computer entered the, our work and uh, I can mention that uh, the, the first time that I published a paper uh, based on computations using a computer, uh, the, the editor-in-chief put a disclaimer. We could not check the source code, therefore it's only under the author's responsibility. Uh, but today nobody would dare to, to write something like that. It was very nice, but uh, always everything was connected and we had one computer and sometimes two computers, but at the same time, we had also physical feeling, we could feel with our fingers what was happening there. But uh, some, at some time, things became wrong. We had classrooms and lecture halls and libraries and students were gathering and listening to the teacher who was physically present in the classroom. 
sometimes students were listening to somebody, sometimes no. But actually, even in this picture in the middle, you have a student who, who is looking upwards. But uh, what you cannot see in this picture is that there is collaborations between students, but this one was asking one of the educators and given uh, uh, he and this educator uh, is giving him indications answers try to explain what he has to explain and you can see also the, the huge variety of books and notebooks and personal behavior and attitude of the students but things became different and at some time we we began to uh, lose something and in particular this pandemic uh, changed the whole situation but even for teachers we could work either in classroom working on papers or we can do mathematics using our fingers and i suppose that what we are showing now is uh, well known to some of the participants and that we could do both the, the practical part of the work using our fingers and we could uh, after that or before that ask the, the teachers here what, what you can see are teachers or researchers in math educa education and they could have their thinking process prior the construction after the construction and i must say that in this classroom the the, the people on the front row had a totally different way of thinking of the other ones on the back rows. And uh, the, in the back rows, they began working with their fingers. And in the front row, they began trying to find a theoretical basis to the questions that we, we were asking. Uh, and then the smartphones arrived. And the smartphones arrived in a very hidden way. It was beneath the, the table and the teacher was not supposed to see that the students came with a, with a cell phone, but the, the students did it. And sometimes it was a very uncomfortable situation when the, uh, the, the teacher discovered that some of the students are not listening to him, but playing with their cell phone. But uh, slowly, and you, you saw that, that uh, it was part of the work, even in the pre-pandemic pre era. And suddenly this very awful, small, tiny ball called coronavirus uh, arrived and changed everything. And so the focus was on hospitals and creating new departments in hospitals and the doctors and the, the, and the nurses were busy with saving lives in very, very, very difficult environments, streets, became to be empty everywhere in the world and classrooms were empty. So we, we had to change. This is our campus. And what you can see is that the campus is empty. The only thing that uh, for those of the participants who already visited our campus, you can see that at that place on the right, where there is a cliff, there was a hill. And uh, as there is nobody, on the campus so the administration could decide to take this hill down in order in a later time to build some buildings over there but this is a situation empty classes and empty uh, and empty uh, lecture halls but even empty researchers uh, rooms this is a room where generally a lot uh, a couple of researchers we're gathering together in order to work together. But now this room is empty. Christoph, you know this room. And uh, the, this room is now empty, but full of technical devices. And uh, the, what you can see here, it's a part of the technical devices which are here. And communications now in students began to be remote. And the, so a lot of devices are here available. Some are wireless, some are with wires, no matter. It's not so important. And we had to do the work in another place. Books, uh, they, they not no room on the table because there are a lot of computers and communication devices in order to be able to 
communicate because if we are working remote on the screen, just now when I'm talking to you, what I see on my screen is what you see, but uh, I see mostly <laughs> myself. Like this, uh, the, this PowerPoint. If I want to see the students, I have to have to, to open another computer and this other computer to be connected here into Zoom also in order for me to be able to see the students, of course, whenever they agree to open their camera, but uh, generally they do it. And so we can communicate and we can see each other and I can see who is speaking to me. And uh, sometimes the human beings were transformed in Hogwarts as, uh, as black squares, but sometimes no, and they were real human beings. Uh, I had to pixelize the pictures because I promised my students that they will not be Hollywood stars. Uh, but uh, actually the world, the entire world became crazy. And, uh, and we, we had to change all of our, uh, our way of, of working. For those of you who know the trilogy called the Foundation Trilogy written by Isaac Asimov, there is a sequel to this trilogy, two other books, very, very important. In one of them, they are visiting they are. There is a space, a spacecraft commanded by a very special officer, and uh, they visit planets. And one of the planets they visit is a planet where nobody meets anybody. Uh, everyone lives alone, and when they have to communicate, it's only via a computer and a screen. When they really meet each other, it's very dangerous, and sometimes one of them doesn't exit this meeting alive. So they, they meet only via screens. And you can uh, imagine that Isaac Asimov, uh, Asimov described that as a pathologic planet. So we are on a pathologic planet where we are communicating only via screens. But at, at the same time, we have students and we want to teach them. And then the teachers became to be one man orchestra. And instead of being together, to all the, the teacher and all his students in the same framework, in the same physical uh, place, uh, he, we had to communicate and to use a lot of devices. For sure, some of the devices, you, you heard about them already and even in the former lecture, but now what could, could we do? Students were uh, fond of seeing mathematics being created in front of them. So they like to have something looking like the, the whiteboard. This is possible. You can use a tablet in order to write either on the tablet or you can use a touch screen to write on the touch screen. And that way the students can see when you are writing, they don't see your hand, but they see the writing being created ex nihilo. And there is, uh, it seemed the feedback they gave is that they liked it, but it's not ideal. If we have some technical and some uh, good modern uh, technologies, we should use them. Uh, so one other possibility is what has been developed at CET. Uh, it's a, a platform where all the topics taught here in mathematics in uh, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, Everything has been decomposed into topics and every topic uh, has a video and an interactive presentation and activities for the students. So they can do it synchronous, they can do it asynchronous, but they, uh, everything is possible. But we have now an integration of the technologies. I must confess that it seemed that uh, people from CET were good prophets because this has been developed before the pandemic. And then it was a very important tool in pandemic era. So what could we do to mix the, the different technologies? And so we could show existing documents and then here in that case, using a, a touch screen and a stylus, we could write on the screen with this stylus 
and then to add something to the existing tech documents. So we can use pre-prepared documents and give the student this opportunity to, to see the mathematics being created or being developed in front of, their, of them. Uh, it was possible also to have a, pre, a prepared document here, a copy of one page of a book, and then to work on this page, annotating the book, uh, highlighting what is important, but also in the PDF document, adding, intercalating, introducing new pages in order to add this mixed work with printed material and mathematics being created in front of the students. They, in this case, it was using an iPad. So everything can be done, can be mixed, with, but much more important is when we want to use interactive presentations. And so in this case, we could use together something presented in a written matter, something printed, but you could, we could use also something which will be very, very interactive. Before I show you one minute of video, I must say that GeoGebra, as Jula said, GeoGebra exists in a lot of different languages. And uh, so it was a very nice situation. I am accustomed that my interface is in English because uh, when I began working with electronic devices, it was a long time ago, only English was used for electronic devices. So from now, from then until now, for me, an electronic device speaks English, but the interface at SARA is in Hebrew and for our students, it's in Hebrew also. But we, we, would, we were able to work with these language is different languages. The same way that I could work with one computer algebra system and a colleague of mine with another computer algebra system and we were communicating and exchanging results. So give me a couple of seconds in order to share with you this nice uh, video. Just a minute. Uh, I, I will share also the sound just for you to, to hear the voice of the students. <laughs> אני רוצה את הדברים אחד על יד השני, ככה, אתן רואות שהנקודה E הופיעה פה, כן? אני רוצה גם את האמצע של BC. אמצע, דרך אגב, שיעשה את העבודה באחד החלונות או בחלון השני, אני רואה את הדברים בשניהם כי יש סינכרון. אני רוצה את האמצע של CA, זה בסדר. ועכשיו אני רוצה את הענך האמצעי, והענך האמצעי במרחב התלת-ממדי, דהיינו, אני רוצה את המישור שהוא הענך האמצעי של AB, פה אין מה לעשות, אני צריך להיות בחלון הזה. הסנכרון הוא אוטומטי או שאתה הפעלת משהו בשביל זה? אין לי, מה, כדי לעבור מחלון לחלון? אני לוחץ על החלק העליון. אני אומרת, אמרת, כשאני עושה משהו בחלון אחד, זה מופיע בחלון השני אוטומטית. אז כי זה משהו, מסונכרן. זה מסונכרן, אבל זה, המישור שיש לי פה, זה המישור האפור הזה, זה המישור XY. כן, אני יודעת, אתה הפעלת את הסנכרון או שזה אוטומטי? לא, זה, זה אוטומטי. אוקיי, okay, mm -hmm. זה אוטומטי. אוקיי, well, just a minute. I must have the... the video stop. Okay, I don't, I, here it is. And so, and we share again the presentation. Here we are. Uh, this is your commentary, okay. so if you want to repeat. Okay, so I will, uh, I, I will say yes. it. Yes, thank you. Yes, I didn't pay attention, sorry. Well, the, the, the question was to have a generalization of a well-known uh, theorem in plane geometry and to generalize it into 3D. And uh, we had to, to draw, to plot uh, perpendicular bisectors of the, of the sides and then to have perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a tetrahedron. And uh, in that case, it's not a line, but it's a plane. And what you could see that the students were 
speaking very freely with the teacher, I could explain what I had to explain and they were asking, everything was very, very calm and maybe uh, more than uh, in a regular classroom. But actually we could work and as the students could have their own uh, GeoGebra, in parallel to what I was showing, they could do it with their fingers. And uh, even I could ask them to show what they were doing. So in that way, things became much more interactive than they were before. Um, where are we? So I have to go back to this PowerPoint. I hope that it will work now. And uh, so in that way, things were a little better that, uh, that we have. But we, I can show more. Here it's a course for other students. These are uh, MSc students who are learning toward a degree in physics and uh, with a focus on satellites. And uh, so in, by that way, I could show them uh, animations to, in order for them to see how can look the, the orbit of a satellite according to the height about the, the sea level and the inclination, the angle of the satellite. Uh, and so they could see it and it was possible to broadcast that. So for example, this is an online applications where you can see a satellite orbiting the earth here and it's possible to change the orbital inclination. So in that way, it's an equatorial one. In that way, it's a polar one. And it's possible also to change the altitude, the, the, the height. And whether the, the orbit is higher or lower, the quality and the possibility of having pictures of our telecommunications can be changed. And that way, the students can understand what happens there and why, for example, last week, it was on, on a Tuesday night, and then again on Thursday night, between 7 and 7.15 in the evening, the International uh, Space Station paced ex exactly above my head. And we could see it with the naked eye. So it was possible to give this kind of, uh, of Im impression, of uh, example of animation, it was possible to give that to the students. And further, with that in mind, we could work, now I'm back with high school students, the work uh, where uh, uh, Christoph was also uh, a, a collaborator, and we could develop a lot of activities uh, around the golden ratio. People are very fond of the golden ratio and uh, either for, for the in appearance in nature, in architecture, in arts, in mathematics, but also we could take it in a more abstract way toward, uh, toward music and even toward uh, astronomy and, uh, and the way to buy calendars. Uh, so it was possible to build a lot of activities and to do it in an interactive way. It, we had a STEAM approach to, to this question for which people generally thought only ab about uh, old Greek temples, but we could have a, a totally STEAM approach. And then it can accompany a student a long time uh, during his cur curriculum. And we could build uh, even artifacts for them to, to see them. And uh, once in a visit, I can remember when Ted Hogu built for me a specific artifact with 4D frame tools uh, in order to show the Fibonacci spiral. And this is still in my office, together with a lot of other things that we can have here. We ask our students, uh, or at least a, a certain number of students for feedback in order to understand if whether they like, dislike some kind of resources. So this is not totally up to date because we stand these questions uh, only a couple of months after the beginning of the pandemic. And you can see what were the, what were the preferences 
of the students uh, on a scale one to six. Uh, at that time, I, I must say that uh, students were complaining not being allowed to come to the campus. Today, we are allowed to have 50% uh, of our students in classroom uh, under the conditions that they have that they have a mask, yes, they so must have this and uh, the, with distance and, and so on. But now students became accustomed to attend the, the lectures from home. And so very, very few of them are really coming. My first lectures that I, like that were this week. And the same thing is true for Sarah also in the other institution. So the, you, you can see that uh, uh, what, were, what were their preferences. And uh, when we asked them, about distance learning online, what, what is their preference, uh, synchronous, asynchronous. At that time, it was a very uh, impressive answer in favor of conventional classroom learning. We feel that things have changed, but we are doing now the, the work in order to check that and to have real data. Maybe uh, we have some kind of uh, of proof that using technology to learn is a good thing. You see this guy inscribed in, in a Fibonacci spiral. So even for that, we have an appearance of golden ratio and other, uh, other artifacts. But what we described is that we can do a lot of things from plane geometry to our uh, architecture and even satellites who are orbiting the earth, we can and do a lot of things using the, this new environment and this new, uh, uh, let's say, we were obliged to, to switch to the new environment, but actually it was a tremendous opportunity to implement new pedagogy, new interactivity, new connection, new STEAM approach to, to what we were doing. And even the need of using this technology the, and these technologies, plural, uh, was uh, a practical way to introduce STEAM. We could do it and then have some kind of re reflection on what we are doing. And this could give, as in a spiral, new, uh, new ideas and new incitements to do a better work. Another byproduct that we had, that in classroom, when the teacher speaks in frontal classroom, the teacher speaks and the students are listening to him. But the way we did, and you could see in this small part, very short part of videos that I showed you, the, the interaction was between all of them and students can speak with all, with all the students and the teacher was part of that. Because generally in a conventional classroom, when the students want to speak to somebody, he speaks to his neighbor or her neighbor, but not to all of them and not to the teacher. And the teacher not always listens or can hear what all the students are saying. But in that way, using these distance learning tools, we could have a total communication transforming the communication graph of the teacher and the students into a complete graph, as I show on the right part of this. And actually, we had now good frameworks to implement what is called the four C's of 21st century learning. The critical thinking, we have to think before and to analyze what, has, what is given and what had to be done. And you, you are using all these technologies, the, uh, this critical thinking can rely on experiences uh, on the, actually, we transform mathematics into an experimental uh, domain of knowledge. And uh, we are very far away now from the traditional definition, example, theorem, proof. And we can, we can have the experiences showing us what could be proven, and then we are experiencing the proof, and then we can check that what we had, we had a verification, we have consolidation, and we have also verification of our results. Collaboration, I spoke already about that. Creativity, 
uh, I, we could begin speaking about creativity in this new environment from now and then until the well i i don't want to say the next pandemic so hopefully there will not be and uh, and communication in all the directions and even communications with people who are not involved in the same kind of course of but we can and so we experienced a really really new pedagogy we had to build a new pedagogy and the same way that in uh, in uh, instrumental genesis the researchers describe a very very personal way of transforming an artifact into an instrument here we transformed a lot of artifacts into a, a big instrument but also every teacher every educator every researcher could have his own way his own approach to invent a new pedagogy in this covid 19 time and that was a tremendous implementation we are learning each from the other and we are implementing things that other people have suggested to us in our departments co teachers communicate very freely via uh, whatsapp and emails and so on and so there is a very rich uh, terrain in order to develop this new pedagogy thank you Thank you very much, uh, Noah and Sarah, for providing uh, this wonderful contribution. I think that there, there, there are no, no topics in this session uh, where you're not uh, connected today. So it was a very rich uh, overview uh, of your activities, first of all, but also about the questions uh, what we are most uh, concerned uh, and, and most uh, focusing um, in, in this in this uh, community. So I really uh, enjoyed that uh, you took time and effort to introduce this. Uh, it wasn't even like multimedia, but I should say like transmedia uh, economy or universe uh, of, uh, of today's uh, teaching that um, ac academics uh, and uh, teacher educators and researchers need to be really content creators in this uh, transmedia environment uh, where we are and uh, that's uh, certainly uh, a great challenge uh, for all of us basically even if we are tech savvy or we are interested about these technologies or or not but uh, this is a huge pressure because uh, I think that's an extra effort uh, needs to be done an extra mile and um, also just yesterday I was involved with a session in a session uh, with OECD uh, uh, researchers so Andreas Schleicher the creator of PISA uh, research and uh, his uh, colleague uh, Stefan Vincent Lacrin uh, from the OECD um, st Statistic Education uh, Department uh, been involved and actually they were just uh, stressed upon this 4C model uh, what uh, you also introduced us. So it's, uh, it's again something which uh, goes beyond uh, the, the subject and recognizing the subject as mathematics uh, to be uh, connected uh, to many areas and many, um, many uh, skills and competences, uh, it can, it needs to be considered. So thank you very much. Uh, I would like to ask uh, those uh, who are here with us in the meeting that uh, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, switch on your camera and this is an opportunity uh, to talk uh, with uh, Sarah and Noah. Okay, Thomas, Thomas Recio, I, I, I see that you are coming into action. So please yes, uh, go you, ahead, welcome. A very short, a very short question, very short question. Uh, it was a very interesting talk, uh, Noah, Sarah, very interesting reflection. And I'm just curious about one part of your talk where you were presenting this video in which your students were working with GeoGebra and they were extending to the 3D case the intersection of uh, bisector lines. 
in, the, in those, uh, I, well, they were talking in Hebrew, I guess. And um, I uh, imagine that they were mentioning the word automatic several times. <laughs> Uh, because obviously I am interested in <laughs> in this. Could you explain a little bit more why they were talking about automatic in that context? Well, these students are uh, pre-service teachers and uh, the course that I showed you one minute was a course on uh, technology in mathematics education. And this, this was for them the first time that uh, they have faced the, the usage not as a black box usage of technology, but as something which has to foster thinking. And uh, so the same, I, ha I had, actually, I was the teacher at that time. La uh, last year, uh, Sarah came and, and joined for, for part of the course. Uh, and the, the, uh, it was a, an opportunity to present them both the contents, the mathematical contents and the usage of the technology. For them to, to be faced with something automatic was a very big surprise. And uh, I will not uh, tell you a secret, but in GeoGebra, there are a lot of automatic possibilities. <laughs> and I wanted them to, to discover them. So in that specific example, they discovered uh, very, very few. Because in, in 3D, I could not ask George Brat, tell me what you see here. Uh, maybe it's an endeavor for the developers. Hey. And uh, that, uh, they, they, were, they were very interested in seeing what they were uh, speaking about. Uh, generally, students, uh, um, some of, of the participants maybe already heard us uh, saying that uh, until the, the first class in primary school, children are totally aware of 3D space, and then in the first grade, <laughs> they are flattened until they arrive to an age of 18, where they begin to learn how to drive. and. Uh, and so we have to, to bring them a lot of tools for them to discover what, we, what is a 3D world. Uh, and so the, this transition from the lines to the planes, and intersections of lines to the intersections of planes. So these, uh, it, all the tools that we can use and the, all the, these automated tools are tremendously efficient for us to help them to, to, to discover more and to develop more understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. You're welcome. Great to see you, at least in 2D. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Thomas, Professor Thomas Recio, for being with us. Uh, is there any more uh, comments or questions from those uh, who are here with us now? So if I can add one sentence, uh, please. Uh, we know now the, the Earth as a plain uh, description on our screens because we don't travel. But uh, actually, we, we should know that uh, and remember that uh, it, once upon a time, we traveled from place to place. Meanwhile, we heard that in Israel, uh, the possibility to enter Israel under some health conditions will be open for groups, not for individuals. Therefore, we cannot have Kajme this year once again on the campus here in Israel. And we will have something uh, online. We will have a one day symposium. When it's, it's ready, we will uh, explain what it is. But uh, we are full of hope and of prayers that this horrible pandemic will find a definitive end very, very soon. That with these vaccines, we will all, all the humankind will be out of that and that we will be uh, again able to meet face to face. But anyway, we are thankful for the opportunities to meet at least in that way. And so more than one year, we are still connected and we are still friends and we are still giving hugs as, as far as, as we can. So th thank you very much for the organizers. Thank you for the invitation for, to both of us to, to share 
what we are doing and we are really hoping that if this year Kachme cannot be here in the campus, at least God willing, next year. Thank you a lot, uh, Sarah and Noah, uh, for your uh, participation. We looking forward to meet you as much as possible, at least in the online space and then in the physical world, back to the physical world uh, very soon. And uh, now it's the time uh, for uh, Mr. Hugul Park and uh, Sung Volim uh, to share information about the uh, certificates of uh, participation. And in the same time, I would like to encourage you to join us uh, in May uh, and the next uh, session, uh, we will communicate uh, time and uh, date uh, of the next event, uh, I guess, uh, somewhere in the second half of uh, May with interesting presentations coming up. So please uh, spread uh, the information and uh, stay with us. So the floor is yours, uh, Mr. Park and Sungwo. We see your screen. Yes. 오늘 yes. 발표자로 발표, 저, 발표자로 좋은 발표를 해주신 세 분께 감사의 의미를 담아 감사장을 드리고자 합니다. 줄리아 볼핑거, 노아 다나 피카드, 사라 허시포 허시코비지, 예, 허시코비지 <웃음> 세 분께 오늘 4월 22일 스페셜 어, 세미나 발표자에 참석해 주신 데 대한 감사의 의미를 담아 감사장을 드립니다. 감사합니다. Uh, thank you so much for all of the part, all of the speakers, and we would like to give a certificate of appreciation for today's speakers. Uh, certificate of appreciation. We present this to Yulia Wolfinger, Noah Nana Picar, and Sarah Hoshkovich for being part of our panel of speakers at our monthly special theme seminar series on April twenty second, twenty twenty one. Thank you so much again. The the, the, this certificate will be sent via email. Thank you. Thank you very much once again. Thank you so much and see you in the next month for all and take care and keep in touch. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you.